Hello, and welcome to Estimating Your College Costs, part of the 21st Century Scholar Success Program. Today, we're going to review the costs associated with college and what your financial aid options are. We're also going to walk you through how to use the Indiana College Costs Estimator, a website you can visit to estimate how much colleges in Indiana will cost you and your family to attend. But first, let's review your 21st Century Scholars program requirements to ensure you're staying on track to earn your scholarship. As a 21st Century Scholar, you agreed to follow the Scholars Pledge, which states that you will complete the Scholar Success Program, which we will talk about on the next slide, graduate from a state accredited high school with a minimum of a Core 40 diploma and a cumulative GPA of at least 2.5 on a 4.0 scale, file your FAFSA by March 10th as a high school senior and each year after until you graduate from college, apply to an eligible Indiana college as a high school senior and enroll in college full-time within one year of graduation and do not use illegal drugs, commit a crime, or delinquent act, or consume alcohol before reaching the legal drinking age. Remember, the Scholar Success Program includes 12 activities you must complete before you graduate from high school. After you watch the video and complete the College Costs Estimator, log into your ScholarTrack account at scholars.in.gov slash scholartrack to complete the activity. Let's spend a little bit of time reviewing the costs associated with college. First, what do we even mean by college costs? We mean the costs of attendance, or the sum amount of attendance for one year, as calculated by the college or university. Cost of attendance varies greatly from college to college, so it is important to do your research. The cost of attendance is usually made up of two main categories, direct and indirect costs. Direct costs get paid directly to the school and include things like tuition, or the cost of attending classes, mandatory fees, or fees that are charged to all students, like technology and health fees, and room and board, or housing and meals, if you plan to live on campus. Not all colleges have on-campus housing, and some colleges require students to live on campus for one or all of their years. Indirect costs, on the other hand, are the other costs associated with attending school. These are costs that you and your family can control, to some degree. Indirect costs are things like books and supplies, or the estimated costs of buying your textbooks, pens, paper, and other required materials. Personal expenses, such as laundry, your cell phone bill, or entertainment, like a movie or pizza. Transportation, or the estimated costs for gas or travel expenses for travel between campus and home. Room and board could also be considered as an indirect cost if you choose to live off campus. So what does all of that mean? When you look at a college's website, you'll see a list or sticker price. This includes all direct and indirect costs to attend college for one year. Looking at the dollar amount for the 2013-2014 school year, you'll notice that the other expenses column is pretty similar between all three schools, but the tuition varies quite a bit. Now you might be thinking, how am I going to pay for all of that? Remember, your 21st Century Scholarship covers up to 100% tuition and mandatory fees for up to four years at a public institution, and a portion of tuition and mandatory fees at private institutions. You may also choose to attend an eligible proprietary institution. This is a term we use when we talk about for-profit colleges like Harrison College or MedTech College. If you choose to attend a proprietary institution, your 21st Century Scholarship will cover the same amount as if you were to attend Ivy Tech Community College. So let's take a look at that chart again. As you can see, we subtract $8,056 from Indiana State's price and $3,560 from Ivy Tech's price. From Franklin University, we subtract a portion of the tuition and mandatory fees, bringing their price down to $31,475. The amount you pay for college is called your net price. It is a calculation of the list price of a college minus any gift aid, like grants and scholarships, you receive. You can calculate it by adding up all the direct and indirect costs and subtracting the gift aid you receive. The remaining amount is the amount that will need to be covered by savings, employment, or loans. The net price is the price you should be looking at since it reflects what you and your family will actually need to cover you won't get a college's net cost until you apply and file your FAFSA your senior year, but we'll show you how to estimate net costs using the Indiana College Cost Estimator later in this presentation. In this section, we're going to review some financial aid terminology so you know what kinds of financial aid are available and which options are best for you. 
Financial aid can be divided into two categories, need-based and merit-based. Need-based aid is awarded to students who are determined to be in financial need based on a government formula. This is determined by a calculation on the FAFSA, which you'll file your senior year of high school. Merit-based aid is awarded to students who have certain accomplishments, skills, or qualities. Now, financial aid can also be divided into gift aid and self-help aid. Gift aid refers to all types of financial aid that do not have to be repaid. That's free money for college. Grants, as we just discussed, are usually awarded based on need. Examples include Indiana's Frank O'Bannon Grant and the Federal Pell Grant. Scholarships, remember, are usually awarded based on merit, skill, or certain traits. There are scholarships out there for almost any category. You could get a scholarship for excelling in a sport or in the arts, or for personal traits like ethnicity, race, or sexual orientation. There are also unique scholarship funds available, like for creating your prom dress or tux out of duct tape. There's a scholarship out there for everyone. Scholarships usually require an application, and many ask you to submit an essay or letters of recommendation. Don't let these extra steps hold you back from applying, though. Remember, this is free money for college. Self-help aid, on the other hand, is financial aid that will need to be repaid back or that students earn through working. Loans are usually the first thing people think of when they think of self-help aid. Loans are financial aid that will need to be repaid with interest, so borrow only what you need to pay for college. You'll have to start repayment on those loans once you graduate, and that money will take away from money you could be spending on rent, food, or entertainment. Loans are available from two main sources the federal government, and private sources, like banks. You should exhaust your federal loans first because they offer benefits that aren't typically found in private loans. You may also be eligible for Work Study, or Earn Indiana, based on your financial need. The federal Work Study program offers campus-based part-time employment for students who show financial need. Earn Indiana offers resume building, experiential paid internships to students who show financial need. This is a great opportunity to not only earn money, but get valuable experience while you're at it. Financial aid comes from a lot of different sources. Most often, we think of the federal and state governments. In fact, the federal government gives out billions of dollars in financial aid each year. But financial aid can also come from other sources as well. Colleges offer their own financial aid, often referred to as institutional aid. There are also private sources like community organizations, churches, a parent or guardian's employer, and others. These sources often give out local or national scholarships. Another source is any savings you or your family may have for college. If you haven't started saving, there is still time. Consider an Indiana College Choice 529 direct savings plan, which offers tax-free withdrawals for qualified educational expenses. Finally, you can consider employment. A part-time job, summer employment, or paid internship can help you pay for college. Studies have shown that students who work part-time, around 15 hours a week, in college are more likely to succeed and have better time management skills. Don't overdo it though, school is still your number one priority. Now, let's walk through how to use the Indiana College Costs Estimator. The Indiana College Costs Estimator is quick and easy to use. It only takes about 15 minutes to complete. You should complete it with your parent or guardian. You'll need their income information, and it's important that they are familiar with your financial aid options as well. The information is only as accurate as the information you enter, so try to enter all the information possible to best reflect your family's situation. It is important to note that this report is only an estimate. It does not represent actual financial aid awards and should be used for estimating and planning purposes only. Finally, keep in mind that the report will change annually based on the cost of attendance and family information. Before you start the Indiana College Costs Estimator, you should gather the following information. It also helps to know your GPA, class rank, and SAT or ACT scores if you've taken them. Go to indianacollegecosts.org to get started. This website has a lot of information on college costs and how to save. Indiana College Costs is also available as an app. You can download the mobile app by searching for Indiana College Costs Estimator on the iTunes App Store or the Google Play Store. To fill out the estimator, click on Click Here to Begin. You'll be taken to a page that gives some information about the College Costs Estimator, including FAQs, related resources, and key terms. 
This page will also tell you about your EFC, or expected family contribution, the amount the government determines your family can pay for college. Colleges use your EFC to determine how much financial aid you need. Your EFC will be determined when you file the free application for federal student aid, your FAFSA, your senior year of high school, but you'll get an estimation of your EFC using the Indiana College Costs Estimator. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can sign up for an account. While you don't have to sign up to run the estimator, this does allow you to save the information and conduct side-by-side -side comparisons of colleges. Accounts are free and easy to create. Once you're logged in, create a new estimator. The screen will remind you of the forms you need to gather to complete the estimator. Once you're ready, start a new estimator. First, you'll fill out basic demographic information or information about yourself. On the next screen, you'll enter some additional information about yourself. For most students, the answer to the yes or no questions here will be no. Finally, you'll fill in some basic information about your parents and the size of your family. If at any time you have any questions about what a term means, click on the orange question mark for an explanation of the question. In steps four and five, you will enter your financial information and then your parent or guardian's financial information. The final step is to enter some information about your academic performance. This will help to estimate what types of merit-based aid you may be eligible for. Remember, the estimator is only as good as the information you enter, so try to be as complete as you can in all of the steps. After you finish, you'll receive a summary of the information you entered. Click Confirm to receive your EFC. Click Next, Calculate Indiana College's Cost to move forward. Select the school you wish to view and you'll see a sample financial aid package. It shows you how much federal, state, and institutional aid you are estimated to receive. It also indicates how much self-help aid you may be eligible for. The estimator will show you two possible net prices, one after the gift aid has been subtracted from the cost of attendance, and the one after the gift aid and self-help aid have been subtracted. It is important to note that you are never required to accept all or any of the self-help aid. Remember, only take out the amount of loans you need to help pay for college. The lower your student loan debt, the better off you'll be. You can also compare schools side by side. Select up to three colleges to compare and click Compare College Costs. This will show you the same information we just looked at from the colleges you've chosen. On this screen, you can see how the estimated financial aid packages vary from school to school. Every school will have a different financial aid package for you, so this estimator can help you decide which institutions might be a good fit for you. You can then go back to compare more colleges, or save your estimates and information to come back to later. And remember to create a new estimator if and when your family's financial information changes, so you can continue to have the best estimate possible. Finally, let's take a quick look at some of the resources you can go to if you have questions or need assistance. Visit scholars.in.gov for any questions you may have about your 21st Century Scholarship, including the pledge and a list of eligible Indiana colleges and the incentives they offer 21st Century Scholars. If you need additional assistance, you can contact our Student Support Center at 1-888-528-4719 or at scholars at che.in.gov. Now go to indianacollegecosts.org to complete the Indiana College Costs Estimator. The Indiana College Costs Estimator was created in partnership with the National Center for College Costs. If you have questions about your College Costs Estimator report, you can contact them at info at collegecosts.com. And remember, after you finish the Indiana College Costs Estimator, log into your ScholarTrack account at scholars.in.gov slash ScholarTrack to track the activity. All the best to you, 21st Century Scholar. As you work hard to complete high school and college, great things are in store for you.